Rod, how you doing today? I'm doing good, how you doing? Yeah, pretty good. Say, how's it going for you, Sheldon, in the first, uh, first three or five games in now? Well, it's doing good. Just uh, keep learning every single day. Uh, it's fun to be out here just playing football. Uh, I mean, that's my job, so I love it. Just going out here, flying around, and then learning every single game, so it's been great. What have been some of the key lessons from Coach Montino that have you know, allowed you to go out and be productive and play? I think uh, just focusing on the details. I think in college, you know, uh, details are important, but you don't really focus on it. And, you know, you kind of try to don't really hone in on that, but in, in NFL, you really got to hone in on the details because that's what changes uh, in a game. So I think he helps me really hone in on the details, my footwork, hand placement, just focusing on those things. Talking to Coach a couple weeks ago, and he made the comment that, you know, for a young guy, you know what to do with your body. He was like, your length and your body. He's like, that's something that you sometimes get a young guy in who doesn't really know what to do with their body. I mean, at what point? I guess in college, or maybe even earlier, did you kind of realize how to maneuver in a way that that works best for you? Yeah, I would say uh, my last my last year in college, I learned a lot about using my length. I think um, my coach did a coach Elsa did a great job of teaching us and how to use length and footwork. So I think I, I learned a lot from then. And then, you know, I learned that God gave me a gift in my long arm so I could use it. And you know, I started using that more and more my my last year in college. And then now, just developing it more in the NFL. I talk to Stephen Means a lot, and I know that he's somebody that you work with constantly out there. I mean, what, what do you think that he's meant to, to kind of you in your rookie year as kind of being a, a veteran voice in, in the room? Yeah, I think he's an extremely great leader. You know, someone who cares about me and cares about what I do, not just on the field, but off the field. So I think he's a great mentor. You know, he's someone who's always pushing me to be better. I think that's the biggest thing is, you know, we, you guys see what we do outside uh, football, but when it's on the field, he's always pushing me to do better, to work harder, to run faster, to chase the ball, and just keep pushing me. So I think he's someone who's just pushing me to be better. And he's just someone off the field I could always talk to about anything. You know, anything off the field related, about family, about anything, really, I can go up to Steven and talk to him about it. How do you go back and watch that sack or, or, or any uh, kind of recent play that went well for you from the Jets game? Are you? Are you seeing that that attention to the uh, details and those little things play out when you make those positive plays? Yeah, yeah, I definitely try to focus on those positive plays. But I think for watching a game like that, I'm more focused on the things that I didn't do well. Yeah. You know, things that I could work on, things that I could probably get a sack on but didn't. You know, things that I could work quicker to get a sack on or things I could do quicker to get off a block and make a play. You know, those things, you know, those things are great, but you got to move on from that and focus on what's important right now. So. That's my thing on watching film is looking at the things I need to work on, the things that I could have improved, and then going on to the next game. Are you noticing that all those little things that, that, that you are doing better, all those smaller uh, details are helping you, are making the game oh, yeah. a little bit easier? Absolutely. You, I feel like uh, once you, I feel like for me, once I do the small things and really get down to footwork, it, it, it just becomes natural. You know, it just becomes like I don't got to worry about it. Right. It's going to happen over time. So that's for me is just working on those things constantly, continuously, so that when it, what happens in the game, it's just it's natural. You're just going out there playing. I do like a lot of time with D-line, you know, when it gets later on in the game, you start to be a little tired, and then you start to kind of lean on the, on the board rush, yeah. so to speak, once it gets late in the game. Like, how do you keep yourself from doing that and making sure you continue to use your length like you talk about right. and, and get those, get those uh, off the line of hands off? Yeah, I feel like it's just, I know, first of all, conditioning-wise, you got to get yourself conditioned for the when the fourth quarter comes. And then also just having a plan, you know. When I go out there and rush, I have one plan. I'm just going to go out there and execute it to the best of my ability. You know, I feel like it's just a, it's a reactionary. The defensive line is a reactionary uh, position. You know, you got to react to who's punching you or who, who, what they're setting to you different things like that. So I think once the game goes on, you got to realize that, you know, you got to mix it up. I feel like uh, playing D-line and pass rushes is chess, you know. You got to see what your opponent's doing and do different things to get by him. Yeah, I asked Matt about, you know, kind of preparation and looking at film of guys. Like, you mentioned uh, talking about looking at different offensive linemen. Like, what are some of the things that you're looking for when you are watching film of, of, on a guy that you're going up against? Yeah, you know, I'm watching their stance, how they get off. You know, some guys get out vertical, some guys get out, you know, wider, horizontally. You know, there's some guys who put their hand in the dirt sometimes and run. Sometimes they don't do it in pass, so you can get a nugget on there. And then you just get you just get a familiarize on, you know, what they're doing. You know, if they're shooting both hands or if they're shooting one hand, 
you know, if you can get them on a bull rush, if you can get on speed, you know, you, you try to figure out all those things. So when the game comes, you're not thinking about all that stuff, you know. For me, it's just I'm trying to go out there and just fly around. You know, I'm not really trying to think about all these things in the game day. So when the preparation comes during the week, I get scouting report, study them, and then once the game comes, I'm flying. And last man, uh, what went through your mind when you, when, you, when you finally got home, man? What, what was like? What it went was through your mind? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. It was a crazy experience. You know, I was. Uh, it was crazy. You know, I was happy. You know, everybody. I think that Shaq just shows uh, everybody doing their jobs. You know, Grady was was up there in the middle, helped me out. Means also, or Dante also on the other side. So everybody just helped me on that sack. But it was crazy, you know, getting your first one, it definitely means something special. And uh, I'm just trying to get working and get some more, so. How much, what was your expectation kind of coming into the season about how much time you would see the field in a defensive rotation? I mean, I think we talk, you know, with guys who are drafted later and they're like, you know, I'm just working to, to get in there at all or to get a special teams role. But you really established yourself as a, as a key role player on this defense. I mean, what was kind of your expectation coming? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I was worried about playing on the field or doing that. I was just worried about doing my job. You know, I think uh, a lot of people think about ahead, but I'm more of a person who's thinking about every single day. You know, those are the biggest. If you think about every single day, the results and uh, the playing time and all of that will come. So, you know, when I got here, got here in OTAs, I was thinking about learning the defense, just every single day learning from the coaches, Coach Monaquino, uh Stephen Means, Tui, Coach, all those guys I was learning from, Dante, and just getting better each and every day. You know, the, the playing time and all that, you know, it comes with learning what you're doing, knowing how to do it, and doing your job. Does that, to that end, is that almost like a gratification that you see, you know, every week in and week out, more opportunities kind of be given your way, that it's like, hey, look, like I said every single day I'm gonna come in here and work, and every single day I want to be able to have something to look back on and yeah. be like, this is the reason why I got to this point. I mean, when you, when you think about no, the gratification sure. of the first few weeks of the season, is there that gratification there for you? Yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, you're happy to get out there and play and receive that playing time. But you also have to realize that, you know, that game and it just happened before. You know, I'm still looking forward to get better and better each and every day. Because I always had a coach tell me, if you just be complacent and you just be happy with what you did, you know, it's not you you're either getting better or you're getting worse. And I think that's for me is what I think about every single day in practice, every single day in life is I'm getting better, I'm getting worse. So, you know, just focusing on every single day and then obviously when the results come and the, you know, the sacks or whatever come, then you realize that you put in the work, you put in the time, you put in the preparation to get there. All right. Yeah, good. Thanks. Good. Thanks. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah.